Did you know that there are 182 million active users on a monthly basis on eBay? It's pretty crazy numbers. When you look at it in our own backyard here in Australia, we've got 8 million active users on a monthly basis, which with a population of 23 million kind of isn't really too bad. But when you look at it on a global scale, we're only talking about 4.3% of the potential customer base. So if those figures don't make you want to turn on international postage, then nothing will. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. How to turn on international postage for existing listings, how to turn it on for brand new listings, how to do it on your phone, and also how to fill out that customer declaration form. So there's gonna be a lot of pre-recorded footage with this one, but hopefully you get some value out of it. And I can get you into doing international postage because it will change your world completely. Uh, a lot of information, guys. Hope you're excited for it. Let's dive into the first topic, which is how much does it actually cost to send something overseas? Let's do it. All right, guys, so I've just jumped onto the Australia Post website and I've pulled up this information regarding uh, domestic and international shipping. And I've got here all of the different price points that you're gonna need to know for international shipping through the standard shipping method. I don't do Express Post personally. As you'll see here, I've got zones one through to five. These are gonna be the price points that you guys wanna keep your, uh, your eyes on because they're gonna be crucial. And the main ones here is the maximum weight. And that's actually very different when you're talking small, medium and large satchels, just like you do with domestic post. The difference here is there's a weight uh, discrepancy. With uh, domestic shipping, you've got up to five kilos for your satchels. Here in the international scene, you've only got 500 grams for a small satchel, a kilo for a medium satchel, and then up to two kilos for a large satchel. So incredibly important that you play around the correct price points per the weight of the item that you're trying to send. Um, an example of this would be, say you had a pair of shoes that was 800 grams. It might fit in a small satchel, but it's gonna fall over 800 grams. It's gonna actually sit in a medium satchel bracket. So you're gonna have to pay that price point depending on where it's gonna go in the world. So remember 70% comes from the United States, so you're gonna to get to know these price points here at zone three pretty well. A lot of your items are generally gonna to go to the US. Um, but look, these would be the price points really to get your head around. Try and print out a copy of this, leave it on your listing table so you've got the exact price points and even for your templates, which we'll go into in a second, to make sure that you are sending out the right price points for your buyers anywhere around the world, these would be the ones to have a look at. We've got our price points from Australia Post. We want to now create our listings. And if it's a brand new listing in our eBay store, we want to make sure that we're putting in the correct price points. So the best way to do that is to create a template. And I'll quickly show you the process to create a template for a brand new listing. I'm in my seller hub here on my eBay account. And I want to be going up to here and clicking on create listing. So once I've done that, you'll pull up a blank template, create a template. And then the only thing you'll need to add in, first of all, here is the title. So I'm going to make this one 500 gram international satchel so i've done that there and then i'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says domestic and international postage details so this is what we want to manipulate as you can see here i've got everything set up for my domestic post i'm free post that's the way i operate and i have a two-day business handling so that's all pretty standard i won't manipulate that in any regard but international postage we do want to touch up so in here i'm going to say that we're going to do a flat rate cost to all buyers and then I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna say, this one is gonna be for 500 gram satchel. We're gonna post this one to a custom location. It's gonna go out to uh, the United States and we know that it's always gonna be the standard international flat rate postage that we select in here. And we know that the cost involved to the United States is $24. We can then click this button here, offer another service. If I click on that one and then I go to custom location, uh, again, we can pick anywhere. I'll do Asia. Asia with the standard international flat rate was $21.60 going back to my table that we looked at earlier. So I can add that one in. I can offer another service to a custom location. This time we might do New Zealand. We know that New Zealand is $18 with the standard international service. And then we go down and we add in another service and that one is gonna go to Europe and the UK with the standard flat rate and that was $26.40 I believe from memory. So there's all of our price points for our four locations. What we haven't included is the rest of the world, the zone five figure. But as you'll see down the bottom here, it says additional post two locations, buyers contact for cost. So you're saying that you will post anywhere else in the world. Um, we'll post worldwide is what, what I'll select. So I'm happy to send it anywhere else in the world, but these are the major price points that I've already got in place. So that'll eliminate a lot of the issue. Um, from there, any of this sort of package weight and dimensions, you don't need to fill that in at all. The only thing that you need to adjust here is the weight. So it'll be 500 grams. So 500 gram satchel, template created now, 
for all the different price points that Australia Post offers us, save template is what we have to do there. So I click on save template, there it is there. I'll say that I'm done. From there, these are my list of templates and I've got an international satchel for 500 grams that I can start my listing with right there. So if I click on start listing, I could then go in and make it anything out of my list of items that I've pre-selected or create a brand new listing for fresh. And then when you scroll all the way down after I put photos, templates, everything that you would want in a listing, you will already find down the bottom here, you've already got your pre-allocated price points. Now, it will be a little tedious because you will need to do the one kilo and the two kilo, the small, the medium and the large satchel, no doubt about it. It does take a little bit of time, but it's probably well worth the effort because then your templates are set up and whenever you need to do a brand new listing, your templates are already there for you. You can see I've got 916 active listings. Say for instance, none of them were on international postage. Well, I can go into the system here and I can actually pre-select items out and then do a bulk setup for international postage. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. Really the key thing for me here is I'm working off the weight allocation that we just had a look at with the price points on Australia Post. So first of all, the ones that I'm gonna try and grab out of my active listings here are for items that are under 500 kilos or 500 grams, I should say, in weight. So the first one that we'll grab here is the rusty board shorts. Um, now I'm just in my, my seller hub in my active listings tab here. Um, and I'm just working my way through, just pre-selecting the items that I want to manipulate. Um, the Gold Coast Suns jacket, I'll take the Gold Coast Suns training shirt, I'll take a couple of DVDs because they're definitely going to fall under 500 grams. If you're not sure, you can obviously go back to your kitchen scales and just throw the item on just to see what the weight is. Uh, but I know just off, off you know, rough estimates that these items are generally going to be under 500. Um, so I'll pre-select these. The, another Gold Coast Suns, there's a polo shirt there, that's going to be definitely under. Um, a couple of jerseys here as well. So let's let's just go with these. I could I could be here for a while picking out all these items, but I've got 12 pre-selected items right here. So say I wanted to put all of these onto the small satchel price points for international postage for any buyers out there. I click the uh, button edit. I click edit selected just down here. That'll bring up this edit listings tab. It generates all of your active listings into the screen here and you can just click on this button in the top left and that selects every item, those 12 items that you just pre-selected. And then you've got a whole lot of different actions that you can take up here. Now, you can edit any single field you like, which is a really cool feature, but we're doing international postage today. So postage international is this one on the right hand side here that you can select. And then you've got this tab that pops up here for you. So uh, with 12 active listings that we're going to amend, we're going to go, instead of no international, we're going to say flat, same cost to all buyers because we know what the price point is going to be for each one. Now, this table here pops up and you're going to say post two. Rather than worldwide, we're going to do individual price points. So we're going to go custom location. And the first one that we're going to do is New Zealand. So we'll click on New Zealand. The services are going to be a standard international flat rate package every single time we do this. The cost is going to be $18 and then for any additional item, an extra $10. Uh, an offer, uh, an additional service, we're going to go back in and we're going to do the exact same process for the four major locations that Australia Post has given us price points for. So the next one that we'll do is Asia. I believe that was $21.60. Just making sure that you're going back and checking your Australia Post charges to making sure that you're getting the right price points. Uh, the next one that we'll add in is the United States for our third one. Uh, so where's United? There it is there. And then that charge was $24 and we'll do 10 as well for any additional. Uh, there it is there. And then offer another service. The last one that we need to do is the UK and Europe. And I think that was $26.40 from memory. Uh, we can always go in and manipulate that. So standard, international. There we go there. Now it says down the bottom here, additional post to locations, buyers contact for costs. So you're saying that you will post worldwide, but you're getting the major price points involved for the, for the majority of people out there. But if anyone else in any other location gets in touch, they can obviously go with the rest of the world price point on Australia Post. So as you can see here, we now have international postage charges per the location for a small satchel for the pre-selected 12 items that you've been able to have. So if we click on save and close here, this will load up, this will generate, and then it will say to us, uh, do you wanna submit your changes down at the bottom left here? And we wanna say, yes, we do. So confirm and submit, we're doing 12 at no extra cost for our invoice at the end of the month, which is a good thing. This will generate up and we've successfully submitted 12 listings with small satchel international postage rates, which is the correct price point. 
um, which is a really good start. So now we've got a few items very, very quickly in just a minute or two available at the correct price for international postage. You can obviously sit here now and go through all of your listings and making sure you're getting the right item at the right price point. But that's a really great way to easily go through your active listings and add international postage in. All right, guys, now for those of you out there that do your listings on eBay on your mobile phone, you can still activate international postage. It's just slightly, slightly different. And what I mean by that is there's no custom location availability on your mobile phone. You just need to do a bit of an average cost. So you're basically just putting a price point in that you want to be putting it to. So the way I do that for my listings is I just go ahead and I find out what the weight of the item is, and then I set it to a USA price point. 70% of the market is US, so if I'm doing international shipping, chances are it's going to fall around about the US price point. It's only the UK that's going to be slightly more expensive, but you're going to capture the benefit of having New Zealand and Asia in there as well that you're going to benefit on from a pricing sense. So if I go in here and I'll show you how I do it on my mobile phone, if I am going to be listing on my mobile, we're going to do these Puma uh, running shoes here, a US size 8, they're $37.95. If I click on the button revise, we go into the listing and we can scroll our way down to post and you'll see that there's post domestic and there's post, uh, well there's only post domestic because I need to add in international postage. So we're going to click on that one. Postage is all set up domestically but we need to activate post internationally. So we click on this one and then we go on standard international flat rate postage always because they are the price points per Australia Post website. And then from there we have uh, enter a postage cost. So as you can see here, you've got worldwide postage costs worldwide. If you go into worldwide, choose a custom location, United States, say for instance, we just did that. There's no other option. You've only got one custom location that you can set it to. You can't set it to multiple custom locations like we did earlier in the video on the laptop. So that's kind of a little bit of a frustration when you're trying to set up international postage on the phone. Therefore, the way I get around that is I go back and click on worldwide. I click done and then I'll go into the postage cost and then what it's saying is you need to put a flat rate postage charge in basically on an average because they're only giving you one location. So you don't know where your item's going to be sold to. So in that regard, I go on US price points because 70% of the market is the US. So I really try to work off that US price point per the satchel. Now, this pair of shoes, it's going to be over 500 grams in weight. It's going to be between 500 grams and one kilo. And I know that $36.90 is the price point for a medium satchel to the United States. So I'm going to put $36.90 in there as my flat rate postage charge. And then I'm going to go done. And from there, you'll see here that I've got a note there for domestic. And now I've got a note for posting internationally. So I can work my way all the way down and I can click on revise now. So what that's done is it's now activated for anyone in the world to buy those pair of shoes at a $36.90 price point. Now, the price point, if it's going to the UK, will be slightly more than that. And if it's going somewhere locally to somewhere in New Zealand, it's going to be a whole lot less than $36. And while it might be a benefit if somebody in New Zealand bought these shoes at $36.90 worth of postage, which it would be a benefit, and you could probably hide behind the fact that there is a handling cost involved in the postage charge, it would probably discourage people, I think, in New Zealand buying those pair of shoes for $36.90. Whereby, if you jump onto the laptop, you can set it at the correct postage charge and it be those $18 worth of postage out to New Zealand. So that's probably one disadvantage for doing it on the phone, but I mean, you know, I still think there's a place for it. I still think the averages approach is a, is a good way to do it. If you just wanted to go bulk on US price points um, and just leave it at that, it would take two seconds to do. But I like to think the correct price points, you're going to get more of a chance of, of making a few more sales. But that is the only way, I believe, uh, let me know out there if there's a better way of doing it on the phone, but the only way that you can add international postage on your phone. All right, guys, so I've got an international small satchel here that's going to be sent off to the United States. I've already filled this out as an example. You'll see here that it's from sender, so that's me. So all of these details here is me. I'm going to be SpongeBob SquarePants today. That's my mobile phone number. That is my address, uh, city, state, postcode, all of that there referencing that it's coming from Australia. Um, I don't actually put a my post number into it. If you do, you can include that, but you don't need to. And a company name, if you have your company name, you can. If you don't, then you don't. 
Um, down here, same sort of thing, company name, if you don't have it, that's fine. I'm gonna be sending this to Patrick. So I'll put those details in there. That's his mobile phone. If you don't have the mobile phone details, that's fine as well. You don't need to fill that out. Um, importer's reference number, you don't need to worry about that either. Literally just what I've got filled out here is completely fine. So the address is going to 2 Krusty Burger Lane in Newtown, that's the postcode, and it is in the USA. So I fill out the address details in there. I'm gonna go over here now and I'm gonna tick, uh, in case of a non-delivery, I would like to return by the most economical route. So I tick that box there, and then I sign off as SpongeBob SquarePants. This is probably the most important part here. So I'm gonna always tick the gift one. I, I personally just always tick gift there. Let me know if you do things differently. Um, full description of goods, I write a t-shirt, that's the item that we're gonna be sending. Items, um, there's one of them, it's gonna be 300 grams and it's gonna be worth about $40. From there, in the post office, the post office attendant will tear that off, um, that will come out, they'll put a sticker on there, um, so a sticker will go there, sticker will go there and there, uh, and you will pay $24 to have that one sent off to the United States because it's a small satchel going off to the USA. So there you have it guys, everything regarding international postage. Hopefully you've learnt a little bit and you can motivate you to give international postage a go because there's a lot of money to be made out there. Like I said, 4.3% of our customer base is here in Australia. The rest of the world needs to be activated. You've got to put international postage on for your listings to make a few more sales and to make a few more dollars, which is what I try to talk about on this channel. So uh, this video was a long time coming. A lot of questions from a lot of you guys out there watching the channel. So I do hope you've uh, enjoyed the video, learned something from it, can start activating international postage into your listings and start making a few sales. Let me know in the comments below if you've had any success with international postage. Let me know if you don't really like international postage for any reason whatsoever. It'd be great to get the conversation started. So drop your comments below. Hit the like button if you got anything out of it. If you're still here watching now, clearly you've enjoyed it. So go on, smash the like button um, and hit the subscribe as well if you haven't done so. Look forward to catching you in the next one, guys. Thanks for tuning in.